Okay, so in today's video, uh, I'm gonna pour four blanks, pen blanks here. And uh, let me catch up to speed as to what I have done so far. I did a little bit ahead so that you didn't have to watch all the boring stuff. Um, but a friend of mine uh, picked up a choya skeleton, which is basically just an old dried up choya plant that uh, ends up with pieces of wood in it. And um, it's kind of, kind of a cool looking uh, wood in there. And you can see it all in there. So I cut the pieces up so they fit inside the blank here. And I apologize, my washing machine is going there and uh, it's really going. So a friend of mine gave me a choya plant, a dried up choya skeleton, which is uh, the choya plants when they die and dry up. Uh, they have a woody fiber in them and it's kind of an unusual open grain plant. So we're gonna put some acrylic around it, some epoxy resin. And what I did was I glued these down into the bottom with some hot glue that keeps them in place so they don't float. And I have an extra one here in case I have too much. So before I started everything, I took and filled all four of these things with rice. And I didn't put the choy in there, I just filled them blank with rice. And then measured that out into here into this cup here and, and marked it at the halfway point and then again. And the way I did that was in these two cups, I actually filled it with the rice from these until they were level. Poured one in, measured it out, poured the other one and measured it. And this goes by uh, volume. And it's a good thing too, because if I look at the side here, it says 160 uh, milligrams here, or um, I'm not sure how much that is. Anyway, it's 160 here. And then it goes up to 290 there. So it's not quite double if I use the scale on the side there. So I learned that these cups, I can't do that. It's, apparently it's not graduated correctly on the, on the writing on them. So once I had my lines marked out here, uh, I made sure that these were clean and dry. And I went ahead and put my colors in both these cups because I'm going to pour it out evenly in these cups. And this cup I have mint and this cup I have bronze. And I like to put my color at the bottom and then pour out over it and then start mixing up because then I don't have all that extra coloring at the edge or powder flying out. And it seems to work quite well. Now, this has been in here for, let's see how long this has been in here. I put a timer on it. 15 minutes. We're going to be at actually 16 minutes here. So let me put that time there. And I've been measuring temperature wise how much it goes up each, each time. And we're at 77 degrees now. Started out at 69, we're at 77. Now this particular epoxy that I use here, and there, there are links to all of this stuff below, the, everything you might need to do your own, except for you have to go out and find your own choya skeleton plant. But the epoxy itself is uh, relatively cheap, but it's, it's kind of a cool epoxy because it has a 40 to 60 minute open working time. So it doesn't heat up right away. It doesn't go off right away when you mix it up. So once you mix it up, you have plenty of time uh, to do whatever you're gonna do. So it's, it's no, um, you don't have to quickly get it all together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna divide this up into these two cups here. As best I can anyway. And if I end up with one having a little bit more than the other, um, that's okay too. You know, it just means I just have one color more than the other and when I mix them, I'll mix accordingly. So it won't be necessarily a bad thing. And the one thing you can do is you're going to find out that this um, epoxy resin is kind of a, a thick type stuff. So if you don't mind, I'm going to switch hands here because I'm actually better right handed with this. There we go. Now I have it in a comfortable hand. And I'll get out as much of the stuff as I can. Because even though it, it's a relatively inexpensive epoxy, uh, it still works beautiful. It, it seems to uh, set up. I can, I can have relatively thick pores with uh, very little cracking. And I think that's due to the fact that it just doesn't have, it's a general use epoxy uh, resin, but it just doesn't have a uh, high temperature. It doesn't get to high temperature very fast. And so I think it just, it just because it's at that slow temperature, it, it lasts. All right. So I got pretty much most of that in there and I will put this, 
I think, on top of something in case it leaks. There we go. All right, so now I'm just going to start mixing this up, uh, get this all mixed up in the cup here, the color. And again, this is the bronze. And uh, I kind of been really liking the bronze and copper mixing with other colors. Uh, yes, that's my uh, wash machine telling me that everything is done and ready to go. But we'll just leave that alone for right now because we're busy doing fun stuff. But um, I'll wait for the whole song to play. It's got a whole melody that it has to play. See, that's a nice, nice tune, huh? A little music there. Okay. <laughs> it's messing with me now. Okay, so, um, but I found that the bronze and copper and uh, silver and those colors really uh, mix well and blend well. Now, one of the reasons that I waited for the temperature to come up a little bit is that um, it helps in the mixing of the color. Instead of the colors going together and sort of just mixing right away, um, I find that if I, if I let the temperature and I let it to get, get to um, start to react or uh, get thickened up a little bit, that the colors tend to uh, work a little better uh, next to each other. They sort, sort of separate. They still blend really well, but they do have a separate uh, flow to them. And uh, parts of it stay the one color. It doesn't just blend all together where you got a copper blue mix all the way through the thing. So it separates a little more. And my understanding is that the longer you let it set, uh, as the thing activates and gets uh, goes off a little bit more, that, that color even uh, separates a little bit better. So let me see here. I may add a little bit more of this blue, I think. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put, and oh, mint, I should say. Uh, mint is sort of a bluish green, is the way that it looks to me, is the way I would describe it. Like an aqua green, maybe. Um, but this, this particular company calls it mint. So we'll, put, we'll just add a little bit more here. All right. So again, the nice thing about this is, is I've watched other um, people use their epoxy resin and they have to get it in there like at a certain time. And um, I like having the time, you know, to relax and not worry so much. Now, if you're trying to wait for it to get thick, the problem is, you know, you're really like eyeballing this all the time. Seems like it takes forever, um, which it sort of does. Okay, so let me see what the temperature is and let me just, Wash off my hands here real quick. Now I'm just using um, rubbing alcohol uh, to clean off my hands from the epoxy and that works really well on, on cleanup. Yeah, let's see. So now I'm at uh, 79 degrees. So I'm just gonna keep track of that. 79 at 21 minutes. So you can see at 21 minutes at 79 now, um, other people wait till it's about 100, uh, well, 95, something like that before they pour. But I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring this in right now. And uh, I'm hoping I have enough for all the pin blanks here, but I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna work on two right now just to make sure I don't spread myself too thin. So what you wanna do is even though, even though you might mix up enough for everything, um, work halfway through stuff first and make sure that it um, it's gonna, last or you know extend through all of them you don't want to come up short now my hope is that i have more because i like i said i did the measurement without the logs in here and these logs are like i said are very porous and they have a lot of opening so they may um it may still fill it up you know it's it's not going to be a big big difference between um what i have in here what i had with the rice sorry concentrating and talk at the same time always a difficult thing okay so i know i have enough for those two i'm gonna go ahead and pour this one and we'll see how much i got left now i also have an extra one in that one in case i do need to uh, i don't have enough quite enough for just a pour straight in all these so we'll see what we come up with here Now I'm thinking I'm not gonna have enough for this one here, but maybe. Of 
because it will shrink down a little bit once you get in the pressure pot you will uh, lose a little bit but the nice thing is that you know these are more than thick enough to where i got some some room to play uh see the big decision now i think i'm gonna go for it i'm just gonna go ahead and fill this one up and see what i get if i need to mix up some real quick i have the luxury of time that i can do that with before i need to get it in the pressure pot let's stop here let's see if we can get any more of this color into it at least a little bit and uh, let's get a little trim going here trim coloring there we go You know, I think that's just barely going to be not enough. And I may have to do... Mix up a little bit more, maybe. So that was, you know, filling these things with rice. And even though you think rice has a lot of, um, you know, it, it's filled in pretty good, it still has a lot of space in it. So it's always better to go more than what you need on uh, on with the rice when you take that measurement. But um, it's quite surprising how much more you need to go, actually. But we'll see how much we can pull out of this. Like getting every last drop here, or trying to get every last drop. on here. You know, I just might have enough for all four of these, so that was pretty good planning, or pretty lucky planning actually. Okay, so I think I think that'll work. I scraped out as much as I can. So let me wash off my hands here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and put this in the pressure pot overnight. And then uh, I will meet up with you tomorrow morning, which will seem like instantaneously. Is that a word? But I will see you in a little bit so we can check these out. Okay, so here we are the next morning. My pressure pot that's been sitting there for about 16 hours. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and open this up and see what we have. Ho ho ho. All right, so I think you can tell by my first impressions that uh, I like the color combination a lot. That really looks good. Okay, so let's see what we have here. And this was our low one here. And, uh, and that looks really nice. And this little raised, but uh, I think we got enough room here on thickness for that one for sure. Um, I'm happy that it, it didn't soak in a lot, so it didn't. Um, we didn't lose a lot of resin into you know soaking into the pieces. This one is gonna be awesome. This has the thicker piece in it. The color combination is really, really nice. Let's just get these out of there. <laughs> well, 
Well, I like the combinations, the color combinations. Um, this one had the two pieces in it, so that should be kind of interesting to turn. So uh, I think I'm gonna turn a pen from these pretty quick. So that's all there is to it. Putting these together um, wasn't that hard. You saw the process. I have four new pen blanks here to try out. Um, hopefully that wood is gonna look pretty awesome in there. And what I can see here through this blue, it is. This, this one was the one, the last that we had, it was mostly the blue with some of the uh, bronze in it. And that looks, that looks pretty good. Uh, the mixture of bronze and blue is just awesome. And it looks like the bronze is a much heavier uh, pigment color because it tends to go down to the bottom of the pen here. And that might change if I wait a little bit longer before I pour it in. And I'll try that next time, see if, uh, see if I get a different effect. But right now, I kind of like the effect of the, uh, let's see the color mint. I like the effect of the mint with the bronze with not as much bronze. So I think next time I do it, I'll make up um, three quarters of the mint and one quarter of the bronze color. And I think that would be, that would be an awesome mixture uh, for these pens and these pieces. So now I'll turn one of these. I'm sure it's gonna look good. Then I'm gonna have to run out to the desert and find some more uh, Choya skeletons and uh, pick them up off the ground and bring them back and start again. Anyway, if you like this, uh, please stick around by subscribing, hit that bell, that way you know when I have a video up. Uh, it really helps. All of the stuff that you've seen me use in this video, I will have links to below so that uh, if you want, you can purchase all that stuff. And I do have a video on making a pressure pot, uh, so check that out right up here. And we'll see you on the next video.